All right. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I am Joe Prisco. I'm joined by Kimberly Dillard Gaffney, right? There's a Gaffney Dillard. Gaffney Dillard. Okay. Yes. So, Kimberly, first off, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's a great day here in Dallas. And so, um, it's, I'm doing good. I'm feeling good. Okay. Wonderful. So, um, we'll get right to our questions. So, okay. Um, you attended Dillard. So, you know, go take us back to that uh, for your mind. Why did you decide to attend Dillard? So, okay. So my mom is a member of Delta Sigma Theta and she was, they were doing a college tour. And so I visited a bunch of HBCUs, but when I went to Dillard, I told my parents, I said, I want to go there. I said, it's absolutely beautiful. Those white buildings. I was like, I just love it. It's gorgeous. And so my parents were like, um, all right, well, let's see if we can make it happen. So, um, so we did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. So talk to us a little bit. I know it's going to, you know, most of this interview is going to be taking you back, but we'll ask you some questions of uh, okay. you know, the current day as well. But um, okay. how about your experiences being here at Dillard? And Dillard was awesome. I will say it was, okay, so with attending Dillard, I had some options. I was either going to go to Dillard University, Tarleton State, which is um, in a rural area of Texas or Oklahoma Baptist University. So um, I ended up choosing Dillard because it's an HBCU. Uh, majority of my schooling, I went to um, predominantly white schools. So I really wanted to go to HBCU to just experience, to have that experience. And I'm so glad I did. I met so many cool people from, there's a lot of people from Chicago with that incoming class in 96. And um, I just met a, a really, just a lot of really cool people. My roommate was great. I didn't have like the crazy roommate experience. <laughs> <laughs> she was awesome. We're still friends um, to this day. And so um, I will say just the relationship piece was great. And then academically, it was awesome. Just had tons of support from, from different educators um, and my different teachers there. So um, it was awesome. It was great. It was a great experience. Okay. Um, did you have a favorite class or teacher while you were here? Anything that really stood out um, among any of your classes that said, you know what, that, that's one that's going to stick with me for life? <laughs> one of the teachers, Dr. Blanchard, I believe it was Blanchard at the time, um, or it was or is, she taught education classes and um, she was great. I mean, she taught academics, but she also taught you um, just real life. And so she's actually who I went to a lot when um, as great as it was, there were definitely some times where it was difficult. And so when I hit those difficult moments, whether it was with relationally or with academics or just missing home, she's who I went to. And so she's definitely a standout. Excellent, excellent. Um, and since you've left campus, have you had the opportunity to come back? And how was that experience for you? Yes, yeah, so I've been back to Dillard twice. So the first time I came, it was shortly after Katrina. Um, I was working for Kirk Franklin at the time and he was doing a concert there in New Orleans. And so um, it was, um, it was devastating. I mean, it was, it looked totally different than obviously it was when I attended there. Um, but I was able to go check out Dillard. And then recently, my family and I, we took a trip to New Orleans and we um, went to Dillard. We walked around, we went to a basketball game um, and it was great. So we have a picture together with all of our Dillard shirts on and obviously I love Dillard so much that I'm married yes. a man with the last name Dillard yeah, so. exactly. I, was gonna, I was gonna say that it, it stuck with you huh yeah definitely so sorry for my confusion because I was trying to make sure you know uh, the right you know your maiden name as well as uh, mm -hmm. your name as well so um let's see um I know your teammates you were chosen to um play in a pro-am uh in California by um you know, so how was the experience for you and how did you guys get chosen? Well, we got chosen because we won our NAIA championship, doubles championship. And because of that win, we were um, invited to attend this pro-am um, tournament in Palm Springs. And so we were there. It was, it was sweet. I, I mean, I was super, I mean, I'm super young and I'm in Palm Springs, this beautiful resort. I mean, I'm actually, I'm staying and playing where Serena and Venus Williams played. So it was like, what? Um, <laughs> but it was awesome. I mean, the tournament was great. I got to play with Malavea Washington. Um, I played with um, former New York Mayor Dinkins. Um, I played with Clyde Drexler. Um, so um, it was great. I mean, I got to meet so many really cool, famous people and the weather was, it was beautiful. It was great. We had a great time. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and I know, you know, um, 
you know, have you been able to keep up with any of your tennis teammates or any of your classmates since you graduated? So um, I keep up a little bit, well, you know, Facebook keeps us all together, right? But um, <laughs> with communication, a little bit with um, my roommate, Melanie, and she is back in Fort Worth. She's a principal here. And then also with another um, uh, another friend of mine, we actually live to go to, and her name's Tiambi. She's in Houston. She's a nurse there. So we do keep in touch. Okay. And um, now we'll get into your tennis roots. So okay. how long and when did you first start playing tennis? And, you know, you know, tennis is a, a great sport, but how'd you get to start playing it? I wish I had this great story, like a love story about me and tennis, but really I didn't want to be in gym because gym was lame, right? When you're <laughs> in junior high, you can't be in gym. You're supposed to be playing sports then. And so it was either tennis or track. So I went and ran, um, did a tryout for track and I hated it. I was like, why do people run? Like, you're not catching a ball. You're not dribbling a ball. This is ridiculous. And then, um, I tried out for tennis and I was decent. So I was like, okay, I'll just play tennis. Um, so I started playing when I was in seventh grade and, um, I just, I liked it. And I just, um, played a lot with my dad. Um, my parents played recreationally. And so I played um, quite a bit with my dad and then I just, um, I got really into it and I started showing some real promise. And so then my parents just really made an investment for me to play. Um, you know, I played at school, but I also played at Brookhaven, um, excuse me, Brookhaven Country Club in Dallas. Um, they did a lot of training for tennis players in the area. And so I did that as well while I was in high school. Excellent, excellent. So, um, you know, obviously we discontinue our tennis program, but then we're bringing it back. So what was the feeling like as, you know, a, a former member of a, our tennis program when we discontinued it? And what was your feeling now that we're bringing it back as a, one of our sports uh, for this upcoming year? I mean, I'm really excited. When you told me that, I was like, that's awesome. I mean, I told every, my husband, my kids, my parents, I was like, they're bringing the program back. And then that is huge. I mean, I feel like um, tennis is a lifetime sport. Um, I feel like that, um, I feel like that our schools that our HBCUs that we need to, um, offer, um, as much as possible for, you know, those that we're looking to attend, attend our schools. And I think, um, tennis, you know, creates that avenue, you know, for students to, um, to be able to attend a great school like Dillard. So I was sad to hear that the program was no longer in existence, but I'm great to hear that it's back because if it wasn't for tennis, I wouldn't have been there. I mean, I received a partial academic scholarship, but majority of my, um, my scholarship came from tennis. So yeah, I hope somebody else gets that thing. same experience. Exactly. It does wonderful things. I mean, sports is a wonderful avenue for people. So yes. So I know this is going to be a really difficult question. A really big question. So, okay. Uh, tell us about your life since you've left Dillard. You know, like, you know, you, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, been, it, it's been a little while, but you know, tell us, you know, what, what's going on in your life? What, what's, what's going on since then? So, okay. So, um, I'll try to hit all the high points. So when I um, left Dillard, I, um, let's see, I worked for AmeriCorps um, or I volunteered with AmeriCorps, which is the Peace Corps. It's like the Peace Corps, but it's domestic. So I lived in Delaware where I was a mentor administrator. Um, and that was cool. It was a great, it was a great experience. You live in poverty for a year to better understand the plight of the poor. And so that really gave me a different perspective of, you know, um, just really how are the systems in place of um, impact those um, who are just struggling financially, who are living in poverty. So I did that. Um, and then I go from that to working for Kirk Franklin, which is really like a weird dichotomy. Like, oh, so I worked for Kirk Franklin for about five years. Um, I did personal road and tour management. Um, a friend of mine, um, her husband, you know, worked for him and so needed some help. And so I just started working with him for a while, which was, um, which was great. I mean, was, I have lifelong friends from that experience. Um, got to travel a lot. Um, it was awesome. It was, again, a great experience um, for me. Um, I also lived in New York for a little bit. And um, after I volunteered with AmeriCorps, I actually was hired um, to work for AmeriCorps um, and work at Pace University. But 9-11 um, happened. And um, wow. yeah, I was actually there in 9-11. So wow. like the people running in the streets. Um, yeah, I was Man, um, scary. Oh, oh yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was like a movie. I mean, it's what you, I mean, obviously it's real, but yes. when you're watching this, it's like, this is what you see in the movies and this is, this is really happening. Well, yeah. So um, it was devastating. But after that, I, I moved back to Dallas and then I went into education, which I knew I would eventually end up teaching, um, just didn't know when. And so um, I've been teaching or had been in education, teaching and college advising for 12 years. 
I have been married for 10 years to my husband, Lou, um, who I really like. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if and, you did it for 10 years and, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I really like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. So, um, and then we have, um, together seven children. So wow. we have three children, um, together, um, six, seven, and eight. And then I have, um, four children that I was, um, blessed with when, um, when he and I got married. So excellent. excellent. That's wonderful. It's just wonderful. So I'll have kind of a follow-up question. You know, you said you traveled around a lot. So what are some of the favorite places that you saw? Some uh, favorite places that, you know, like, you know, I'm, you know, going out on tour because, you know, you were kind of like a musician. So <laughs> that, that is true. Actually, musicians have horrible reputations. So I don't want to be a musician. <laughs> I'm just, that's, that's so bad. Um, but true. Anyways. Um, so um, no, I did work with great musicians. They were great. And they were fun guys. They were, they were good. Um, I'll probably oh a favorite. I really there are a couple like, favorites. You can do go the couple favorites. Couple stand out. Couple of them. Okay, so I'll probably say Detroit. Being in Fox Theater was awesome because it's Fox Theater and it's historical. I mean, it's historic building and there are so many different people there. So when you kind of go to the big venues, like um, you know, if you're in LA or in Detroit, that everybody comes out, right? Everybody's you know everybody comes out so that's kind of cool when you're in those big places because you get to meet and see so many people so um probably fox theater new york was sweet because i'd never been to new york before so that was awesome um toronto toronto i really like toronto i really like canada a lot i would actually move to canada if my family was <laughs> i love canada um so those are probably some of my favorites and i'll say um was it New York or Detroit? I can't remember, but I got to meet Whitney Houston. Really? So that was sweet. Yeah, that was really that's, cool. That's excellent. You know, and we'll, we'll go into another question later on about some <laughs> famous people you've met. Okay. <laughs> They'll be included now. So <laughs> um, you mentioned that, um, you know, like you're from the Dallas area. Are you from Dallas or are you from like a surrounding city around uh, that area? So I grew up in Duncanville, which is a suburb of Dallas. Um, Duncanville Panthers, City of Champions. And I currently live in a neighboring suburb in um, Cedar Hill, um, but I was born in Lexington, Kentucky. And then um, I also lived um, in Castro Valley, California, um, outside of Oakland and in Seattle, Washington. Um, wow. My dad worked for IBM, so he was moved around a lot. And then we ended up settling in Duncanville when I was around seven years old. So this, so this question is going to kind of be like, all right, you're going to have to pick some of your favorites. But, you know, my question would be like, what, what's the best part about, you know, what you consider your hometown, which like when you're bragging about whatever you consider your hometown, I know you're from a couple, <laughs> what do you brag about when you talk about your hometown to say your kids or anything else like that? Um, well, when I talk about Duncanville, that's, that's what I consider my hometown because that's majority of my child rearing took place there. Um, I mean, we were just an athletic powerhouse, especially when, when during the time that I was there. So we're talking about multiple um, basketball championships, you know, women and men. Um, Tamika Ketchings um, graduated from Duncanville. Um, Chris Owens, he played um, professional uh, basketball for a little bit, was from Duncanville, but we were also strong with baseball. So, I mean, we always talk, that's why we say, that's why we're called the city of champions because we really, <laughs> it's not just a name, it just really is. No, it, it, <laughs> just fits, it, fits. it just is. <laughs> Okay. Um, this is going to be kind of a deep question for you. So um, talk about some people that maybe inspire you or have inspired you throughout the course of your life. Um, Cause everyone's inspired by someone or people that you look up to and whatnot. So. Um, I would probably say um, my parents in the sense that my parents are just uh, my parents are just rock solid. They're, they're hardcore. I just, they're, I love them and, and they love me in spite of the many things that I have gotten involved in <laughs> or done. And so I would say they're an inspiration more because I just, I want to make them proud. I don't want them to feel like, um, I mean, I know they would never feel like it's like I wasn't worth it or anything like that, but I just yeah. don't want them to ever, I don't know. I just want to make them proud. My parents yeah. I'm adopted and um, my parents, I mean, it sounds kind of weird, but I mean, I'm going to say my parents kind of took a chance, you know, they don't, you don't really, I mean, you don't really know what you're going to get with your natural no. kids either, but you know, I was adopted and I just want to be like, thanks, you know, so I just want to make them proud yeah. and achieve things and be able to do things for them and just love on them. So I'll probably say that my parents would definitely be my greatest inspiration. Excellent. That's a great answer. It's a great yeah. answer. So um, now we'll get a little bit easier before we get to some tougher ones. So okay. yeah. 
Um, do you have a favorite movie or um, you know uh, a go-to movie when you get time to kind of relax by yourself? Hitch. Hitch. Okay. <laughs> Love it. It's a good Love one. It. Will Smith and uh, was it Kevin James in that one? Uh, yep. And then Evan, uh, Eva Mendez. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Definitely. How about a yeah. uh, favorite TV show? Ooh, oh, I don't know. If or I'm TV sure. shows. Oh. Oh. So right now I'm really into Married at First Sight. Okay. <laughs> it's, just, it's fascinating to me. Um, so I'm really into that. And then um, my husband and I, we watch Queen Sugar. We watch A Million Little Things. And we watch This Is Us. So that's kind of like our shows. Okay, excellent. Yeah. How, about, how about music? Are you into any musical groups, musical artists, anything else like that? listen to more like contemporary christian music or even a little gospel like i really like um karen hawthorne um i'm trying to think tasha cobbs um i'm really i, I like them and then old school i love lionel richie okay. like <laughs> love lionel richie best concert i've ever been to i've been to a few of beyonce's i've been to some other you know but i mean he it was a great concert love lionel richie he puts on a good show huh <laughs> yeah he does he really does okay um and obviously you're a very busy person, you know, you've got, uh, you know, like a lot of kids, I mean, mm -hmm. got, uh, you know, several kids and yep. when you have free time, what are some things you like to do in your free time? Uh, sleep. Sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sleeper. I do that. And then I do like to hang out with friends though. I am social. I'm definitely an extrovert. I want to um, be social, hang out with friends. So my friends and I go have coffee often. There's a the place where I was going to go to earlier, um, a coffee shop in downtown Cedar Hill. And so that's my thing too, just hanging out with friends, um, drinking coffee and then sleeping when I can. Yeah. Hey, hey, sleeping is always good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Especially running around. Um, you uh, mentioned you're in the educational system. Um, do, you teach a, uh, do you teach a grade or um, a, do you teach yep. a course or? Um... I do. I am currently teaching um, fifth grade reading. And um, I am blessed to be able to actually, I am um, teach where my three younger kids attend school. So excellent. yeah, we had hoped for that and um, it worked out. So um, I left college advising. I was college advising at a private school, local private school, but I came over and decided to go back into the classroom and so I could be with my babies. And, and I'm sure that we could have a whole other show on your experiences as a teacher as well. But, oh, you know, mm -mm. but, but we will not get into those. <laughs> we'll save that for a second show. Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> um, so um, you've lived a very interesting life uh, already. So what was your first ever job? I worked at Kroger. I was a cashier at Kroger uh, grocery store. Yes, it was great. Me and my friend Nicole worked there together. We had we had fun. <laughs> it was a great job. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, let's see. Seem like you've got a very happy personality. So, what's your key to happiness? If you know, if someone asks you, like you know, you know, like you seem like you have a very optimistic outlook on life. What's your key to happiness? My key to happiness would be my relationship. Um, with the Lord, you know, I've just really learned over time that um, for me personally, that if I am in tune with the Lord and just spending time with him and truly casting my cares upon him and talking with him and trusting him and, and also just keeping a perspective, um, you know, of, you know, um, in everything, give thanks, you know, to um, even when things are, aren't happy or, aren't ideal to just, um, focus on, you know, what the Lord has blessed me with. And so, um, that's really what does, what does keep me optimistic and keeps me happy is just, um, knowing that I have him and that he's, um, you know, he's here with me. And just, again, that perspective of just all that he's blessed me with. Wow. It's, it's a very deep answer and it's very heartfelt as well. Um, I feel changing the subject is really difficult, but, uh, <laughs> so, um, Obviously, you're a very talented woman. Do you have any hidden or unknown talents that people don't know about or surprise when you spring things out? Like, oh, I can do this. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that you could do that, Kimberly. I can talk like Barney. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you to do it. I'll just take your word for it. Yes, I can talk like Barney. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, now we'll get into the you know, famous people. I know that, um, when you were out in California, you met uh, Clyde Drexler along with Peter Dinkins. Um, and you also met Whitney Houston. Um, have you had, you know, had the opportunity to kind of um, you meet in any other famous people or any other people that have kind of stood out that you've met throughout your life um, that, you know, would be more in the celebrity category? Hmm. 
I would probably say the biggest standout would be would be Whitney Houston um, because I wasn't we weren't we weren't sure if she was coming um, to the show. She was um, coming as an attendee, you know, attending, you know, the show. Yeah. Her show, and then um, it was even though it was for a moment. Um, meeting Prince was pretty cool. That is good. That's good. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was just neat to be like, oh my gosh, it's Prince. And he's really, he's really small. He's, yeah, he's really tiny. He's really petite, you know, or he was. Really <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. But he's gorgeous. He's beautiful. He almost looks oh, yeah. like, yeah, it's it's crazy how how good looking he, how good looking he was. <laughs> I, mean, I know you've seen a lot of places. You've been to a lot of places. Has there been a place yet that you haven't seen throughout your life that you would like to go to sometime in the future? Oh, absolutely. I would love to go to Africa. I would love to actually do the, um, actually travel like the uh, diaspora. And um, I would love to do that. I would love to um, just get more in touch with like my um, ancestors, you know, the roots and just really connecting on um, a deeper level with, um, with my African heritage and my African roots there. Another wonderful, deep answer. Uh, <laughs> again, feel hard, you know, asking another question, but um, you know, What's something you could absolutely not, uh, you could not live without, that you need to have something you could absolutely not live without? So I feel like, you know, everybody would kind of say the same thing. So I'm going to say, you know, the Lord, you know, I feel like I couldn't live without my husband. I feel like I couldn't live without my children, right? So, mm -hmm. I, but I feel like that's what everybody would be expecting. Yeah. So I'm going to say outside of those, I couldn't imagine living without queso. Queso. <laughs> I, love, I can't imagine without cheese. Cheese is so good. I mean, it my is. friends will be like, hey, where do you want to go eat? And I'll be like, anywhere where I can put cheese on it. I don't even care. So I'm going to say queso. Queso, okay, all right. All right. Um, and uh, do you still get the chance to play tennis or do you get a chance to go out in the courts very often nowadays? I do. Um, well, since when COVID happened, it it shut things down. But prior yeah. to that, and she's starting back up, there's um, there's some courts down the street from my house and they um, there's a lady named Coach Martha and she does cardio tennis. And so I do um, participate in cardio tennis. So it's really a bunch of, I mean, a bunch of us who used to play in college um, and even some high school kids. And I mean, you're just, I mean, it's drill after drill, you know, a lot of, you know, running. Um, which I really like. I'm not really into competitive tennis anymore. It's just not my thing. I don't, I don't yeah. really care if we win or if we lose. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to, um, I like to more or less compete against myself yeah. at this point to see what I yes. can do. So yeah, I do still get out there um, and play and I'm looking forward to starting it back up. That's a wonderful answer as well. So, all right. <clears throat> so this will be my last question for you and then you be officially off the hot seat. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, having attended Dillard, um, you know, like if say someone's watching this interview and looking for advice on, you know, like why they should choose Dillard as their school, you know, can you kind of, you know, why'd you enjoy about it and why should someone else, uh, you know, consider attending Dillard as well? I would say that if you're looking for a small school that feels like family, that truly feels like a family, that um, if you're looking for a place where, um, you're going to receive the support you need, you know, academically, um, where you're going to, you know, be able to make connections with, um, with, you know, professors or other staff that are truly interested in what is going on, you know, what are your highs, how can we celebrate that, what are your lows, how can we, um, you know, walk you through that, um, then I would say um, Dillard would be your choice. Um, it's also, it's just also a lot of fun. A lot of times people will say, when it's so small, and it's, it's, you know, it's small and it's little and, and it's like, well, no, I mean, the population may not be great, but it makes it even more fun. I know that sounds right. weird, but it makes it even more fun. And we had so much fun um, just creating our fun on campus, um, going to games, you know, hanging out. And so I would just say, if you really want the balance of both of those two worlds, um, and, and you're also in New Orleans, <laughs> then I would say, <laughs> um, you know, Dill would definitely be a place um, to consider. Excellent. 